Grace and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, have you made it to the zoo this summer? So many of you have told me that one of the places I have to see already this summer is the zoo. Now, I'll admit to you, I haven't been to the zoo yet. Uh, my wife up here took our two children to the zoo, left Dad at home with a list of chores, a honeydew list. Uh, it doesn't seem quite fair, I don't think. But what I was told is the zoo was pretty awesome. Lots of animals, very family-friendly. I'm sure most of you have that favorite animal at the zoo that you have to see. There's that one animal that no matter what, you have to see it at the zoo. You like all the animals, but if you don't see that one animal, it's almost like the whole day was a waste. For some of you, that might be the penguins or the giraffes. Uh, Alex, you look like a monkey man to me. I bet that's the one you have to see. And uh, you know, uh, Nathan, maybe you like to see the bears. Everybody's got their favorite. Uh, for my daughter, Leah, it was the lions. She came home and I heard all about them. Daddy, Daddy, I saw lions. They were big. They were strong. Oh, and they were fast. And Dad, there, there were two lions. There was a mommy lion and a daddy lion. And those lions roared. And you can imagine my two-year-old uh, roaring, uh, roaring, 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 uh, kind of hard to get her to stop. And then in typical two-year-old fashion, she says to me, Daddy, can we get a lion? No, we can't get a lion. Lions are pretty cool. They're fun to watch at the zoo, to, to take pictures, maybe even get close enough to, to throw something in. But lions have to stay at the zoo. They have to stay in their lion pens. Lions are dangerous, I told her. They have sharp teeth. They have sharp claws. And they're really too loud to bring home. And really, we can't bring a lion home because he'll make a mess in the house. And then mommy will be upset with daddy. <laughs> lions have to stay in the zoo. Lions have to stay in their lion pens. In our Old Testament lesson for this morning, we hear of another kind of lion. This lion is big. This lion is powerful. But this lion is not an animal that you'd find at the zoo. This lion is none other than God Almighty. You see, at the very beginning of the book of Amos, Amos tells us that it's the Lord who roars from Zion. And when the lion roars, who can not fear? But there's one in our text who does not like this lion. He thinks the lion is all too loud. And he's seeking to put the lion back in the zoo. His name is Amaziah. Amaziah is a priest, supposed to be a priest of the Lord, but is a false priest, one who serves King Jeroboam. Amaziah doesn't like the Lord's voice. Amaziah thinks the Lord roars too loudly. He's stirring up trouble for the people, and he's seeking to put the lion back in his lion pen. But the roar of the Lord is not easily quieted. The Lord sends his prophet Amos to this priest Amaziah. And the Lord will roar through Amos a rather harsh message. The message is this. You have failed to listen to God's voice. You feast in your homes, and yet the people of Israel starve in the cities. Tell King Jeroboam, that you have set up idols in God's house. And because of this, judgment's coming. The Lord will send your children to exile to be slaves in a distant land. The roar of a lion is harsh. The lion sinks his teeth into you. His claws hurt you. And so Amaziah cannot stand this roaring lion. Amaziah tells Amos, get out, leave, we don't want you here anymore. 
We can't stand to hear this message any longer. You may have noticed by now that Amaziah is a self-serving, a go with the flow, a cooperate, a tolerate, a I don't want to stir anything up kind of a guy. Amaziah does not want to go before the king and tell the king, you should stop feasting and help your people eat. Amaziah does not want to go before the king and tell the king, remove those idols from God's house and turn and worship him. It's too hard, Amaziah says. It's going to cause a commotion. The king might not like it, and then he might not like me. It's easier this way, he says. It's easier to put the lion in his pen than it is to listen to God's word. This morning, there is an Amaziah clone in you. A clone in me, one in this church, and one in our world. Our sinful nature, this sinful flesh, will do everything that it can to domesticate God's word. To turn God's word into really anything I want God's word to say. We love God and we love the lion. It's fun to go to the zoo, to take pictures, to watch the animals. But when we leave the zoo, the lion stays over here. And I go back to my house. I don't want the lion coming home and messing anything up. We love God's word. We love to be in his house. We love to worship to receive his gifts. We love to be in Bible class. We are a people who delight in reading God's word. And yet we're a people oftentimes that when we're done with those things, we like to leave them over here and then go on with our daily lives. We don't want to have to bring God's word to a family member, to a friend, or even to ourselves. That, that's going to be hard. That would cause a commotion. We recognize that like Amaziah, we're a people that like to cooperate, to tolerate. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. And so we too try to quiet this roar of the lion. We put a choke collar on the lion. We don't want a big, powerful, strong, roaring lion. No, God's people want a soft, purring pussycat that can sit in our laps and we can have it do anything that we want. We turn this line into a kitty cat when we make excuses or exemptions for God's word. Well, I know that God's word says I shouldn't live with my boyfriend or girlfriend before I'm married, but we're practically engaged. It's not really that big of a deal, is it? And that choke collar gets tighter and tighter on the lion. Like in Amos' day, we seek to tame this lion as we feast in our homes and ignore those in our communities. Not only literal feasting, but it's buying into American consumerism. I have to have two cars. I have to have three cars. I have to have the latest iPhone or Android. I have to have the newest computer or the best TV. And as we get more and more stuff, the tendency can be to not care about those in our community who are hungry, who need clothing, who need shelter. And we're tempted to think, well, that's really somebody else's problem to worry about. And we fail to listen to God's word as a church as we get more concerned about bringing more and more people into the church than we are about creating mature Christians. People who feast not on spiritual milk, but on spiritual meat and potatoes. Christians who are growing in their faith and in their relationship with their Savior, Jesus. Seeking to stifle the lion's roar is not new. Amaziah tried to do it, and God's people fail and run the risk of doing it today also. And yet God's word is not easily quieted. God sends his prophets to proclaim his word. You'll remember those stories of old. 
God sent Moses to roar his word to Pharaoh. God sent Elijah to roar to King Ahab. And God sent Amos to roar to this priest Amaziah. And in our gospel lesson, we heard how God sent John the Baptist to roar his word to King Herod. And then our God sent that greatest prophet, Jesus of Nazareth, to roar to the Amaziah of his day, to the high priest Caiaphas. But Caiaphas, true to his sinful nature, declawed the lion. He took out the fangs from the lion, and he sought to end that roar once and for all by nailing Jesus to a cross to be killed and quieted. And yet it was on that cross where our Savior roars the loudest. The roaring lion, you see, is the butchered lamb. And this butchered lamb roars the loudest in his greatest weakness. For it's on that cross where this butchered lamb roars words of sweet forgiveness for all of God's people from beginning to end. And this roaring will not end on the cross, for Revelation 5 reminds us that the lion of the tribe of Judah has triumphed. The lion lives. The lion has risen. And this lion now roars words of life and salvation for all of God's people. The world, our sinful nature, which would try to quiet and to put out God's word, has failed. Jesus lives. Jesus has triumphed. The Lord roars through his prophets. He sent Amos to send his word to the people of Israel. And the Lord now, through, the, through his holy scriptures, sends Amos to speak a word to you this very day. For those times where you have tried to manipulate God's word. Where if you have tried to turn God's word into really anything you'd like it to be. As you've tried to uh, fudge it, maybe you might call it. Repent of those sins. Repent of not listening to the voice of your Lord. Repent of seeking self over God's word. Of thinking you know better than God Almighty. And then turn. Turn to your loving lion, to Jesus Christ, who roars to you words of sweet forgiveness, which flow from his butchered side. As the children of God, who are freely forgiven because of Christ's love, then cling to this word. Cling to God's word and his voice for your life. Be here in worship every week. The summers get busy. I know this. There's family to see. There's uh, vacations to be taken. But be here every week. Don't miss, not even once. Set the example for you and for your children that God's word is what's most important in your life. As the colors would indicate, we're in a season of growing. Have your faith be growing this summer. Do you have a, re a closer relationship with your Lord? Trust always in God's word. The lion is big and powerful. He's big enough and powerful enough to destroy all of your sins and to forgive each and every one of them. Set the lion free. Don't keep him in the zoo any longer. This lion loves and he cares for you. Hear his roar and listen to his voice. Amen. We rise. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understandings guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.